Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. My name is Manuel and today we are taking a look at the breadboard prototype for my CubeSat EPS. This episode is supported by a dear friend of mine who just randomly decided to send me some money so I could buy parts for this, which I find equally insane and amazing. So thank you very much, you maddest of lads, and let's get started. All right, so let's see what's going on here. On the very left, we have the solar cells. We have two modules, which each have 10 cells individually, also connected in series, and the modules are as well connected in series. Um, they have their respective um, protection diodes. So this one is a blocking diode that prevents current from flowing back into the cells and damaging them. And these two are bypass diodes that well, bypass the string of cells in case one of the one of the cells is damaged. I chose Schottky diodes here for minimal voltage drop so we don't lose too much energy on the protection diodes. I mentioned this in the previous video when we talked about part selection, but these, uh, these modules each deliver 6.9 volts individually when there is no load attached, so we should get about 13.8 volts from this setup. This would be what goes on a half U panel, so on a 50 millimeter high panel. So um, for instance, uh, for a two U cube set, you could have up to eight of these strings of two solar cells. These are then connected to the battery charger, which is the LTM8062 eval board. I did also talk about why I choose this um, micro module for the moment in the previous video. So uh, if you're interested, I put the uh, the link in the description. The batteries are then connected to the top power rail on the breadboard. So this up here is VBAT. I don't know if you can read this. With a nominal voltage of 6 to 8.4 volts. And the batteries are also connected to the buck regulator through individual wires because I didn't want to pull too much current through the breadboard power strips. Now the buck regulator is the LTM4675 eval board, which has two individual outputs, but only one of them is currently connected to this over here, which is a adjustable load, which basically simulates um, the current draw from, from the system. Now back to the breadboard, um, we have a Raspberry Pi Pico, which stands in as the OBC, so the onboard computer for today, for this demo. And this over here is a small buck boost converter, actually it's not an LDO, but it's just what I had on hand that puts out 3.3 volts for this uh, power rail below here. So this is the 3.3 volt rail. And its enable pin is connected to ground at the moment through this remove before flight jumper, which uh, stands in as one of the inhibits that would be necessary for the system. Of course, this is not all the inhibits that are needed because for example, a uh, battery disconnect device is completely missing here, but it, it will do the purpose for now and I'll talk more about this, um, about the inhibits when we look at the schematic. Also connected to the Pi Pico via I2C is the buck regulator because it outputs um, telemetry through PM bus, which is a variant of I2C and it also can be configured through I2C, but I haven't fully managed to get this to work, but more on this in a bit. All right, so let's now pull the remove before flight jumper and see how we are doing. So we see that the sensors are lighting up, uh, the LED is on, the Pico is blinking, which means that it has booted and nothing has started to burn so far. That's uh, always a good sign. If we now pull up the browser, we should start seeing a little dashboard that I have put together and by I, I primarily mean ChatGPT because I couldn't write JavaScript if my life depended on it. But yeah, this just uh, shows some sensor data. So in the top row, we have some information about uh, currents. Uh, on the left is the charging current, which is of course zero right now because we are not getting any sunlight and the power bank isn't turned on. And to the right, we have the it was supposed to be the two output currents for the buck converter, but I haven't really managed to get the PM bus communication to fully work, so I'm only reading off um, one of the channels right now. Also, I haven't managed writing to the registers in this little um, micromodule, um, so the voltages are still set to the factory default, which is 1 volt for this channel and 1.8 volts for this channel. 
Of course, in the actual EPS, I would like this to be um, 3.3 and 5 volts, respectively. But that is something I'm still working on right now. So for the moment, it's just in its factory um, default and we are reading some telemetry from it. Now, in the second row, we have the um, battery voltage, which is around 6.3 volts right now. And what's supposed to be, again, the two output voltages from the buck converter, but it's also just readings from the one channel. And in the bottom row, we have a charge indicator right here, which is off right now, and three temperature readings. So the first one is the temperature sensor right here. If I put my finger on this, we should see it go up. Yeah, we do. The second one is the internal temperature from the Pico, which has um, an ADC dedicated to measuring its internal temperature. And the ambient temperature I'm taking from the current sensor, which also has a, a built-in temperature sensor. It's decently accurate when we are um, not charging, but of course when we are charging and it needs to measure some current flowing through it, the temperature goes up here. So right now we're at 26.8 degrees ambient, which I think is pretty accurate. So why don't we turn on the power bank now and um, see how the charging goes. So we see the power delivery board light up, the charge indicator turn on and the charging current shoot up to uh, 2 amps even. Oh wow, that's actually the maximum this can do. So yeah, it is happily charging the battery. I haven't really managed to get any reliable data from the solar charging so far, but I'll try again later today and um, cut in some B-roll here. So I did get some sunshine a bit later and we can see that we get a steady 40 to 50 milliamps of current going into the VBAT rail, although the charging indicator turns on and off. That's not a lot, but in my opinion it shows that this should work with more PV modules. So let's maybe turn on the adjustable load next. We are pulling um, 100 milliamps, that's written here if you can read it. And yeah, we see the output current uh, go up. And if we increase the current we are pulling to half an amp, we see this go up as expected. And we can really draw quite some current through this. So let's go to 2.2 amps, still happily regulating. Uh, what does it say? 9, 0.97 volts here. Um, so yeah, good regulation across the board. I didn't, I don't have a way to measure the noise right now, but that's for a future video. And we are pulling six amps now, still hap happily regulating. If we turn off the charging, we should see the battery voltage drop. Yeah, which we do. And we can even pull more, pull more current here. It is rated to 9 amps per channel, which we are pulling now. And it is indeed still happily regulating. We are a bit down to 9.3 volts, uh, 0 0.93 volts, sorry, now. Uh, telemetry still says 1 volt, which I don't think is really accurate. That's, yeah, I'll have to look into this. So yeah, that's pretty nice. I mean, of course, this is just a very crude demo, basically just hooking up a bunch of evil boards. But I think it shows that in principle these parts work together just fine and I can continue working on the schematic right now and improving my communication with the LTM4675. But yeah, as I tend to say, so far so good. I'll put the dashboard code up on the repo, but please be aware that the PMBus stuff only works partially and it's pretty rough overall, but you still may find it useful for something. And also, if you have any experience using PMBus with MicroPython, please get in touch. So that's all I have for today. For the next video, I'm working on two things simultaneously. Either we are going to do a quick update on the structure, or we are going to look at the schematic for the EPS. I'm going to make both videos anyways, but if you have a preference about which one you'd like to see first, please leave a comment. Also do so if you have any questions or thoughts on any of this because I just enjoy hearing from you all. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.